Welcome back to my channel, Get Some Colour In Your Life, Dave Law here. This video I'm going to be doing a straightforward castle painting. So this is the reference, this is Rochester Castle in Kent. Um, I believe it's in the town of Strood, I may be wrong. Um, comment if you do know where this castle is. Leave us a comment, let me know, but I think it's in Strood, down in Kent. And uh, using my Bockingford 140 pound cold pressed, um, rough would be nice as well to get that texture on the castle. But it's, uh, I decided to go for the cold press, and I'm using um, both palettes today. I just find it easier to have my colours open, my both palettes, Windsor and Newton and White Knights, and I find I've got more of a variety of colours and more mixing space as well. So I've got a few mixing spaces that are already taken up in different colors. And that's why I bring out my white night set as well. So I've got a few um, spare wells that have not been, that are still clean white, that have not been used at all. So I'm just using my pen, just using the um, a nice soft, I want a nice soft sky um, in the reference, it's just, almost white um, so it's a bit overcast um, not much going on very um, straightforward but I wanted to put a little bit of blue into my sky so I just added a little bit of French ultramarine with a bit of cerulean blue and just whatever else was in the palette so maybe a little bit of a touch of grey in there but that's absolutely fine you can use grey in your sky as well and then I just blotted out with the tissue paper so for my colour for the castle, I'm using mostly yellow ochre and then a touch of um, burnt sienna and a tiny, tiny bit of Van Dyke brown. So that's going to be this nice um, beige colour and that's the colour of the castle. So just adding a little bit more dark um, and I'm using just a slight bit of uh, dry brushing. I will use more dry brushing as the painting progresses. So um, that just gives me a nice um, texture to the castle. So that's why I said in the beginning that rough paper would be um, probably more ideal for this sort of painting because you're allowing the paint run out on your brush and then just quickly dragging it down across the paper and it leaves you this nice texture um, so I will be doing that um, later on um, over the first wash of the castle. So there's nice trees in this in this um, scene, a nice tree overhead just coming in. And you can see at the bottom, towards the bottom, I've added a little bit of orange just to um, just to add a little bit of interest. There's a, a little bit of sort of orangey colour in there anyway. And then for this foreground, more of a foreground tree, it's perhaps a more dominant tree um, I've put my first wash down and that's the lightest color which is more lemon yellow and sap green and then I've just gone in with darker sap green and ultramarine mix and I'm just adding that in wet and wet so I'm letting that color softly diffuse mix together a bit but it's still allowing that light colour to show through for the highlights. And then there's just a few darker trees on the right just disappearing out of the shot. Um, so I'm just covering that, just sort of blending them together, having a really dark corner um, just to get some more contrast into the scene. I do like the trunk of this tree so I thought I'd pop that in and that's just a, a a nice mix of just a bit more Van Dyke Brown into that castle colour that I mixed up. There's a little tree on the left hand side just over the wall. I thought I wanted to include that just to balance the scene out just a little bit. So I'm not, not popping in too much detail. And this, this is a really um, straightforward scene really. It, the drawing, the drawing took me the longest time. It was fairly, um, a little bit tricky. I mean, don't underestimate these these scenes. Um, I know I, I did have the perspective was well off the first time I did it, 
Um, so I had to draw some guidelines just for the windows and the angles of the, um, the top of the castle. So you got the left hand side which slopes up to the right and then the left hand side, the right hand side that slopes up as well. So you just got to make sure those are in correct. Um, so that that's just um, quite tricky. It can be tricky sometimes. I know a lot of times I've done buildings in the perspective. You, when you look at the windows and you, you fail to see the angles and the way the, um, the angles that they're at. Um, sometimes it's quite easy to mess that up. So just pay attention to any windows on your scene and just make sure that you've got them at the right perspective. Now, one of the things that I like to do with trees, um, just to make them um, more sort of 3D, give them that sort of um, dimension to them. Um, I do like, you saw the, the first layer that I added and then the second layer that I added wet and wet. What I find that works best with trees is if you have three mixes. So you got the lightest and then sort of a mid-tone and then just use a really sort of dark for all the shadows. And that just helps the painting to really pop, really stand out. Um, so I really, really am happy with the tree. In fact, I think I think that's my favourite of all of the paintings so far. Um, I do love that tree. So just popping in some... Um, some of the foreground grass, it's a really nice um, light sort of beige yellow colour. So I'm just using the yellow ochre again for that. And for the wall at the side you can see just blotting out just to knock it back. I don't want it to stand forward too much. It is in the background, it's quite distant. So um, And it gives a little texture as well once you get the tissue and, and blot Start taking out pigment, it does leave that patchy sort of look. So it's perfect for things, um, old buildings or castles, things like that. Um, it does offer that look. So you can see that um, I've added some dry brushing and that's just with a darker tone for the castle. And now I'm just adding in the um, windows. I didn't, I didn't want to use a brush for this. I didn't want to paint these in necessarily. I just thought I, I wanted to use my Tombow brush pens and they're absolutely perfect for this job. You'll see um, as I as I add those in. Now one of the things that I do like about painting castles and especially this castle um, of all the castles that I've seen, this one is a bit more forgiving um, things like windows because if you look they're all sort of different size. They're all imperfect. Um, I don't know how they became the shapes that they are, but you got some really sort of wide windows and then some narrow windows, and they're all sort of almost black. Um, so it is quite a forgiving scene. You can, um, as long as you got the basic overall perspective right, and I'm not talking 100%, uh, I mean, as long as it's nearly correct i mean mine's probably off slightly um but as long as it's there thereabouts then you can get away with that and especially because it's an old building and the windows aren't exactly parallel or you know uh, um probably not even in the right places um you can get away with it in a scene like this so that's just something to look out for something to bear in mind um it's a castle it's really old and it probably doesn't um probably not built perfectly so I'm just uh, speeding up this you can see how I'm laying in the windows um, just with my Tombow marker pen uh, there's two sides of these pens so I'm just using the smallest nib um, and that's working absolutely perfect for the windows and then just a few details with um, a darker mix so I've got the yellow ochre and a bit more Van Dyke Brown just to get some just slightly darker, darker tones here and there. You can see just a bit of dry brushing. Um, so I'm just literally getting my brush. And there's really nothing on there, and I'm just rubbing it against the um, pigment. And then just um, whatever comes off. Obviously, there's not much on the brush because um, it is very dry. But whatever's on there, it does come off onto the paper and give me that nice uh, texture rather than 
pen in each and every brick that you can see on the scene. Um, so I find this does work quite well. And then there's a nice um, rail, sort of, um, I think it's for the entrance. I don't think I went in this castle. Um, it was while I was staying in Kent. Um, I did visit this and, and took the picture and I actually sat down and did a bit of a plano painting of this um, very castle. Um, I think it was from the same point that I'm painting here, it was the same painting, um, but I sat down on the grass and um, did a quick sketch of that and it was a really nice sunny day. It was probably the same from the same time that I took this photo actually. Um, so there's a nice rail coming down, um, I guess it's for the entrance, there's, um, it's almost, I think it protects you from any falling um, rocks or bricks from the castle itself, so there's a, a rail and then a um, sort of a, net, a metal sort of cage that goes over the top as well. Um, so yeah, just a really nice scene. Um, you can do this with any castle scene. Um, I know I've painted a couple of castles and it's one of my favourite things to do. Um, we are lucky in this country. We've got lots of castles around, um, especially in Wales. Um, so you only have to drive 40, 50 minutes away and you've got your first sort of castles in Wales. And then just a few castles here and there. And in Scotland, you've got lots of nice castles there. Well, there you go. Um, I've just removed the masking tape. Again, it's a, a wide masking tape. It's just a normal decorator's masking tape, um, but it's a wider, wider tape. So it gives me that nicer, sort of bigger, wider border, which I do like, um, and I think it does look well on this scene. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope you like that. Please give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment. I'd love to know your thoughts and um, I'll see you again in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.